welcome you all. And uh, my name is Egina Makwabi. So may I introduce the speaker? Uh, uh, the first speaker is Dr. Deidre Cruz. Uh, she's a professor of medicine in the uh, Division of Nephrology, John Hopkins University School of Medicine. Faculty of, uh, she's also working with the Faculty of Nursing, School of Nursing, uh, the World Center uh, for Prevention, Epidemiology and Clinical Research, the Center for Health, uh, uh, the Center for uh, Health, uh, equity uh, in jo John Hopkins, sorry for that. He's also an associate director for research development, Center for Health Equity, Johns Hopkins University, and founding director, uh, Dr. Diversity Program, John Hopkins uh, Initiatives for Careers in Science and Medicine. Uh, she's also a member of American Society of Clinical uh, Investigations. So that is uh, Dr. Deidre Cruz. Uh, the second speaker is Dr. Ananthi Karumanchi. Uh, he's a medallion chair uh, in vascular biology. He's a, a director of uh, renal vascular research, uh, Department of Medicine at uh, Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. And also she's a, a, he's an American board uh, certified internal medicine and nephrology. And also he's also a member of American Society for Clinical investigations. So uh, I would like to welcome uh, both of you, two speakers. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, the floor is yours, is yours, and we are waiting to hear from you. Well, well thank you. Um, maybe I'll, I'll start us off um, first by, by just saying thank you for, for having us um, uh, join your meeting. Now, it's evening for you all. It's, it's morning uh, for where I am, and it's very early morning for Dr. Karamanchi. So uh, very happy to, to be with you all. Um, what we thought we, we could do today, I guess, is just to stop through and um, uh, highlight uh, some of the, the uh, exciting aspects of upcoming uh, American Society of Nephrology Kidney Week, which is going to be November 4th through the 7th, and it's, it's going to be held completely virtually this year. Um, that's a sort of an update from where things stood just even just a few weeks ago where we were planning to have a hybrid meeting that was going to be, have one portion that was in, in person and one portion that was going to be virtual um, due to the ongoing pandemic. Uh, we, we've um, moved it to fully virtual. Um, I think the exciting thing about that is that certainly does open up opportunity for, we hope, greater engagement from colleagues around the world, including in, in Africa, where from what we've been told, there have, have certainly has been barriers sometimes to being able to travel to, to Kidney Week in the past. And so, um, so I think that is one silver lining of, of the pandemic. Um, so some of the things that maybe I'll highlight, and then I'll turn, turn things over to Dr. Karamanchi, maybe he has some, some favorite um, sessions that he would like to highlight. Um, but some of the things that we're really excited about um, that we continue to have, we continue to offer a number of different learning pathways. So depending upon what your particular area of interest um, may be, uh, whether it's acute kidney injury or um, uh, a focus on dialysis or chronic kidney disease, uh, transplantation, uh, we have pathways uh, that you can follow as a, as a part of the meeting that will allow you to specifically focus on sessions that are offering content around those particular topics. Um, we have, um, this year we have six early programs as well that will take place uh, in just a couple of weeks actually before the um, the full annual meeting, um, and they will offer much more in-depth uh, education around uh, these particular topics, um, acid base uh, uh, disorders. Uh, I see it's being projected, which is great. <laughs> um, so acid-based disorders, um, uh, we have a session on artificial intelligence and implementation science, uh, one uh, focused on polycystic kidney disease, uh, one on critical care nephrology, and then a session on glomerular diseases and also one on kidney transplantation. So those are our um, early programs that we'd certainly invite you to, to um, take part in. Um, we, of course, have... Uh, uh, many posters um, that have been submitted and selected for presentation during the meeting, and that um, those again will be uh, projected virtually uh, with an opportunity to to submit um, uh, questions or comments to the authors of those posters. 
um, and we um, have a numerous sessions uh, with with uh, with speakers, um, including some really exciting plenary sessions with um, uh, some some very uh, accomplished uh, uh, researchers from from around the world, um, including uh, during a, a COVID-19 focused panel that we are really excited to uh, be able to offer this year that's in conjunction with the National Academy of Medicine. Um, and so it will include um, Dr. Anthony Fauci as one of the speakers, um, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, um, as well as, as, a, as, a, as a moderator for that session. So I'll pause there with the highlights that, that I've shared and, and, um, and, uh, and turn things over to Dr. Karamanchi to see what he might like to highlight. Yes, again, thank you. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, I think that, you know, as uh, Deidre pointed out, um, while we're disappointed that we're not able to have a, a full in, you know, in-person meeting, uh, I think this, uh, this might actually be a blessing in disguise for us as many people around the world, particularly from Africa and other parts of the world um, who cannot travel. This might be a better way to sort of get to um, you know, offer our exciting, maybe the best kidney program in the world to some of the young trainees and practicing nephrologists um, in Africa. I think that Dr. K you know, uh, as Dr. Cruz pointed out, um, there are quite quite a lot of exciting sessions, um, you know, just for clinical management uh, across the spectrum, all the way from um, you know pediatric nephrology to adult nephrology to transplantation. But there's also uh, you know some interesting scientific talks, basic science talks, uh, particularly some of the young Chinese trying to understand are interested in glomerular diseases. There are many many talks on on uh, APOIL1 nephropathy. Uh, which is particularly relevant for, um, um, you know, for the doctors, nephrologists in Africa, where you might see a, a particularly in Western Africa, where we, where we might see a high degree of April one related glomerular disease. Um, there's also, I, I believe, um, you know, quite a bit of um, um, talks, um, you know, at least on the basic science side that um, some of the young trainees might be interested in looking at newer, um, you know, immunosuppressive therapies, both for the transplantation field uh, but also um, uh, newer uh, antihypertensive drugs, newer uh, molecules um, that have been slowed to progression of kidney disease. For example, there's many, many talks on um, SGLT2 inhibitors and how that might be important for um, uh, progression of chronic kidney disease. There's also many new talks um, on um, mineralocorticoid antagonists. So these are uh, sort of some new areas. So on one hand, we have the sort of the uh, bread and butter sort of clinical talks uh, that talks about management from all the way, as I pointed out, from pediatric nephrology all the way to transplantation. But we also have some emerging sort of uh, uh, scientific talks, uh, some basic science, some translational, that will touch on a variety of di uh, diseases. Um, but in particular, for, for the nephrologists from Africa, as I said, APOL1, a big area, but also progression and diabetes being very common, new, newer ways of managing diabetic nephropathy, uh, whether it's a mineral corticoid antagonist, SGLT2. So there's a lot of those kind of talks. I also think uh, Jinsu Kim will uh, send, out, uh, send out the details of ASN. I believe for the trainees and the students, it's essentially, um, it's free. So I think the more you guys can disseminate to the uh, trainees um, and they can at least you know, um, learn from a few talks, it'll be helpful. Uh, but we want to sort of, um, you know, have many of the African nephrologists participate in our meetings. Um, interact, there will be opportunities to ask questions. Um, there's live chats uh, for the live sessions, but also um, there's ways to sort of talk to people who present posters. I'm trying to think uh, in terms of, um, Jinsu, did I miss anything else? Is there anything specific um, that you wanted me to highlight? No, uh, I, Dr. Caramanchi, you covered everything, you and Dr. Cruz. Um, I will be including in the chat link um, some additional information about registration. Uh, yes. But we will be having a virtual meeting platform that includes, um, you know, all of this information, easy ways to search on information, and all of the content that's provided at Kidney Week will be available in the meeting platform through January 7th. So that way, if you have other obligations, you can't watch everything during the core dates, is everything will be archived for people to access. Yeah, so that... Um... I will also encourage you, uh, uh, our uh, highlight is the plenary session that we have the COVID panel. Uh, I know the whole world has gone through COVID in Africa, not so much, but I think it's so important, um, you know, in terms of thinking about vaccination, 
uh, particularly for our dialysis patient transplantation uh, patients. We also, that COVID panel also has um, uh, specific issues related to nephrology, dialysis, CRT, um, you know, what, how do you do, how do you manage uh, when you get, uh, when you get this uh, massive sort of surge in COVID um, that might happen. Um, so we're into the US. Uh, there's also in the COVID panel, there are talks related to specifically about the viruses and, uh, and uh, the biology of the virus, the, bi the mutations that could occur and exactly long-term implications in terms of are we looking at yearly vaccination versus not. Um, and I'm trying to think, um, yeah, and it's being moderated by Sanjay Gupta. And if you have seen him, um, he's a neurosurgeon who comes on CNN and sort of uh, one of the medical reporter there. Um, and then we're also talking about the long COVID syndrome. Um, so it's clear now that more and more of these um, COVID patients, even when they recover from our standpoint, they have a lot of them have serious chronic kidney disease. And so we're talking about a huge population of emerging dialysis patients um, from prior, um, you know, let's say bad COVID infection. Uh, we have a, a cardiologist here, Amitabha Banerjee from the UK, uh, will be talking to us specifically about implications for nephrologists. Um, and cardiologists and other internal medicine doctors as to what the implications of the long COVID and how do we have to retool our learning? How do we manage, um, you know, those patients? I think that, um, uh, so in terms of other plenary talks, just give you a quick uh, run through. Uh, Carol Grader um, is won the Nobel Prize uh, for describing um, aging, um, uh, describing telomerase uh, and its role in aging. Um, so she'll be talking about um, you know, uh, it's essentially, um, you know, this pathway uh, by which uh, cells age. Um, and so that would be a more of a basic science talk. Um, um, and what, uh, and, and we'll be talking about just the newer ways of approaching medicine, uh, whether it's AI or whether it's um, newer uh, approaches uh, uh, using, uh, you know, computer based sort of uh, uh, medical management. Uh, and David Williams, I think, uh, Deidre, do you want to talk about David Williams? Is uh, sure. what he specifically speaking? Sure. So, um, so, so uh, David Williams is um, really an expert in um, social drivers of, of of health outcomes, and and he um, he's at Harvard and um, has done a lot of work, particularly around the downstream impacts of discrimination and racism. And um, he will be. Uh, one of our plenary speakers we're really excited about um, having him as well. Yeah, so he's essentially defined the field. He started working in this area uh, almost 30 a long years time ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's essentially the guru for this field about uh, racism in medicine and how uh, we all need to be aware and what we could do to sort of, um, you know, fix some of those issues. Uh, so I think the uh, young people and you and the uh, nephrolog practicing nephrologists would have a, a, a there's something for everybody. So, you know, for the practicing nephrologists um, who have a certain expert interest in dialysis, you have lots of sessions on dialysis. Uh, for the practicing nephrologists who are more into kidney transplantation, there's some very exciting stuff. There are people who are more interested in uh, research and some emerging new drugs, um, you know, participating in new trials. There's lots of exciting things that are happening in that space. And, 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 for the, and some of the young people who might be actually interested in doing some science and who might even be interested in, you know, coming over to North America to learn more basic science. There's, there's some really incredible basic science sessions. Uh, so I would encourage, uh, you know, the program be disseminated to all uh, the uh, uh, folks in Africa, all the nephrologists and trainees, and Jinsu will get you a sense of how uh, the discounted prices that may be available, um, you know, to participate. And as Jinsu said, the whole program will be available all the way till early January. So you don't you don't have to rush to sort of um, you know get all of the program within within the four days when it's being launched. So you'll have enough time to sort of go back and um, and uh, and listen to those talks. I think we're very excited. I think that I we, uh, despite the fact that we um, um, that we're disappointed that we won't meet in person to socialize, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to disseminate to parts of the world, parts of Africa. Um, where we would normally not get those um, trainees and nephrologists um, just because of travel issues. And if we could reach to, to them and have a, even a, a little bit of an impact in terms of um, newer therapies and you know, new ways to approach our patients, uh, it'd, be a, it, it'd be a start of a beginning of how do you engage um, that community long term. Absolutely. Uh, Are there questions that we could answer for you? Sorry, I heard someone chime in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what? 
Uh, now, I think uh, something exciting about, uh, you know, you, you, what you've included, I'm glad you've, um, you're going to talk about racism. Now, we cannot talk about globalization. I mean, especially with this internet, the world has become so small. But, you know, in, in, in the past, maybe racism didn't matter and people are not even talking about it. But lately, if something happens in one part of the world, it's felt on the other extreme end of the world, particularly, you know, if it has some racial connotation, I think it is high time actually we raise voices against racism if we are going to create a, a, a harmonious human community. I think, let, let me commend the American sort of, of, of nephrology actually for really thinking about that. And I think it shouldn't continue there. I think all, all the other organizations and associations actually should may, you know, make voice against it. Because, you know, today actually, you know, I, I'm not saying, you know, some of these bad things, you know, if some if something bad happens, um, of course, there are people like that to interpret it as racism, but I think, uh, you know, we as the nephrology world or the nephrology community and, and as doctors, I think we are much more intelligent enough not to be manipulated. I think if we you know, put forward our voice uh, against racism, I think, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it will be considered as rational. And I, I, I really, I think the, the American sort of nephrology is, is, is taking um, a leading Roy, for the first time, uh, in a society like you know, talk, to talk about you know racism and condemn it openly, and I, I would like to say thank you very much. Now, okay. if there are any other comments, you're welcome. Thank you. I just want to um, build on your comment and, and, and thank you for that, um, and, and say that in addition to uh, Dr. Williams' uh, plenary talk, we all we also have other sessions with other speakers that will as well be be talking about. Um, certainly some of the downstream impacts of, of racism. And you all may be aware that the um, American Society of Nephrology in partnership with the National Kidney Foundation recently um, partnered to address this issue of how we um, estimate GFR and the fact that in the United States, we, we have been using a, um, a different coefficient if a person is of, of, of um, Black race, and and so that has also been uh, something that uh, our organization has taken on in the in the in the over the last year. Um, something I was um, uh, a part of in terms of that task force, and that that report just was published just this past uh, week. And so this is definitely something that that um, the organization kind of more broadly is is addressing. I see yeah, Dr. Roy Chowdhury. I, 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 I want yeah. to invite him to speak as well. So. Yeah, no, 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 no. Th thank you. So, I, and I, uh, so, uh, so my name is Prabhi Roy Chowdhury. I'm, uh, I'm uh, one of the ASN council members. And actually, I, uh, this is hot off the press. Deirdre Cruz was just elected as of yesterday to join ASN council. So you've got two council members. Uh, uh, but what I did uh, want to say is that I am just so happy that we're having this meeting. Uh, Lloyd, I don't see you, but I see your picture. And Lloyd has been an old friend for, um, uh, gosh, it must be 25 years ago, Lloyd, I think that we first met. And so, you know, thanks to, uh, to Lloyd, uh, uh, and also very much so to Deidre and to Anant uh, for, uh, putting this together and also Jin Su, and of course, all of you who have joined. I did want to say something from a, as a personal viewpoint. I, I just think it is so important for ASN to really go out and uh, be there in all parts of the world in a very collaborative and interactive fashion. Uh, I think as Anand said, there is a huge amount that, uh, um, the, the, the kidney community in Africa can learn from North America, let's say, in the basic sciences. I think there's also a huge amount that we in North America can learn from Africa. There are, you know, and I, I grew up and I've kept in close touch with India. You know, there are process of care issues. There are common ways of thinking. There are ethical issues. There's the racism issue that was brought up. And I just think we get so much richer both as people and as communities if we can do that and I you know I want to say that ASN is truly committed to these sorts of interactions I appreciate the earlier comments about racism Deirdre uh, in particular has been a huge leader for ASN but we are committed to engaging with the kidney community worldwide 
So really happy. And Africa, you know, I'm a demographics guy. Africa is where all the young people in the world in the next 50 years are going to be born. Africa and young people are more innovative and they're willing to take risks. The rest of the world is going to be aging, but Africa is going to be young. That's and the minds are going to be young. That's the opportunity. All right, I'll stop. That was not about kidney disease. <laughs> no, thank you so thank much. You so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Prabir, for coming on. And actually, it was uh, uh, it was uh, Prabir's initiative that uh, we've actually had this session this uh, this evening for us here. Uh, and, and thank you, Anant and uh, Dr. Dieter, for actually coming on. And you see, uh, there is a, a lot that we don't see at all in this part of the world. For example, you know, I've heard of Anant since years on pregnancy. I've heard of uh, uh, you know Prabir for years, uh, Dr. Dieter. Or, you know, it's it's, it's a huge a plethora of stuff that you work on and 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 this you know an exposure to all this uh, to the youngsters in this part of the world will make an ocean of a difference and that is uh, this i think could be a great start and there are so many very talented bright people in africa and today i think the game is changing uh, and the whole setup is changing and i think uh, i won't occupy uh, uh, the the stage here and i think let the others talk and I'm extremely grateful for having come on board and i think dr jinsu i think we should do some programs into africa over the next year we can plan it out in advance we'll be extremely grateful if you could come on and you know, all these talks that actually you know uh, that uh, I've heard uh, at the ASNs in the past that I've been able to make it to, and now it's virtual, and so it's a big opportunity. So thank you very much. Yes, Any um, other comments? Yes, uh, so I'd like to thank the speakers um, for the very good um, highlight on what will be presented during the upcoming uh, ASN week. And um, my comment is, um, uh, I think, uh, this will be an opportunity for us, specifically from Africa, uh, where normally during uh, uh, development of imaging new drugs and uh, research uh, normally being conducted in, in Europe and America, and rarely or none of those research are being conducted in Africa. So it, uh, probably during this time, uh, during the ASN work, we'll be able to to learn and know and collaborate on how we can be involved in the research of these uh, imaging uh, drugs, new drugs, because it's very, very important that these drugs, are, the research is conducted in, 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 in particular in Africa, because if we get these yes. drugs from America or uh, America or US and normally, you know, there might be some differences in terms of drug distribution uh, absorption uh, and, and those kind of things. Thermokinetics might be different. So I think that would be a very good opportunity for us uh, to, to engage and partner with our fellow nephrologists during ASN. And lots of, op there are lots of opportunities. Uh, huge yeah, I think that as Prabir put it quite nicely, I think we both of us can learn from each other. And it's a wonderful opportunity that we have here, uh, for us at least as nephrologists from the North America to engage with our African colleagues. Dr. Wala, uh, there's so many others actually who would like, uh, I'm sure y'all are here. Uh, we'd like your opinions, uh, Dr. Wala. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much, Lloyd. Um, um, interesting to know about the ASN week. It was a disappointment last year. We could not attend. And uh, as the speaker has mentioned, it's always a silver, COVID has always brought a silver lining. And this is one of them that we will be able to attend virtually and to enjoy the similar benefits as we have been in, uh, enjoying while attending these um, eminent talks in ASN week um, uh, physically. Um, looking forward to these talks. Uh, obviously, there are several areas that are not uh, uh, are touching on, on our practices from day to day, and therefore it would be a good eye opener to see all these presentations, especially looking forward to those ones from Africa also. I'm, I'm sure a few of them will be featuring. Thank you very much. Dr. Kabinga, Dr. Robert, we like all your views. It's your most welcome, please. There is a question I've, I've seen. Somebody has raised the question: In what category do the nephrology nurses register for the conference? They, they register into in what category? I think that's a question for Jin Su. Yeah, it would be. I believe it's non-member, but um, Jin Su can clarify. 
Yeah, I'm checking right now. Um, there is a non-member category that has um, a higher rate, but we could maybe work with you directly in finding a reduced rate so you could participate. I'm gonna go ahead and put my email in the chat. So if you have any questions about registration, um, I can work with you directly on trying to find um, a way for you to attend the meeting at a reduced rate. I think if you can find something like that at a reduced rate, that would be incredible. Yes, certainly that that's a, that's a great idea, and uh, especially on the nursing side. Actually, we've been actually uh, you know in, in East Africa, we've trained over 150 nurses now. What quality dialysis now? We take them from the medical schools. I mean, from the nursing schools and train them from scratch for a period of six months, and 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 we continue to have nursing webinars every week. Uh, and and they are they are wonderful people, and and so this would be a great opportunity and exposure that they never would otherwise see. So it would be a great idea. I think something like that can be worked out actually. Yeah. I, I, I did have a question, and I apologize for missing the first part, and you may have uh, discussed this particularly with Jinsu, but uh, did we talk about, you know, how, how uh, now that uh, there's been this interaction with all of you as leaders in the field, you know, how we can spread the word, uh, particularly amongst uh, younger people, uh, maybe people uh, who are in other parts of nephrology and uh, and. Uh, I, I, if I could see you, Jin, uh, Jinsu, you would probably smile at this. I mean, can we be innovative in terms of uh, getting people from Africa, uh, you know, access to some of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, all the offerings from ASN? Um, definitely. I think if it would be helpful to know if there are kind of hot topics or key issues um, that African healthcare professionals, nephrologists and nurses, um, other uh, practitioners are dealing with. And I think at, at a bare minimum, what we can do is pull that content from Kidney Week and make that freely available to uh, your group. Um, so I do think if, if we can work with maybe Dr. Vincent and other um, leaders of this network to identify some of the kind of key topics where it would be helpful for you all to have additional information and learnings from Kidney Week, we can make that happen. That, that, sure. that would be huge. Uh, sorry, Anna, then I was just saying, and if that could be pushed out then through all of you to younger people, a young, you know, people starting their careers, uh, because that's where, you know, like I think yes. the future is in the is in young people and Africa is a young is a young continent. But uh, uh, I think that's where the future is. Yes, Prabhu, that's a, that's a wonderful idea. And thank you very much for bringing it up. Actually. It's, it's, it's really needed, actually. And there are there are there are uh, programs that are there, and I think an exposure to this sort of uh, material that Anand mentioned would be wonderful. Actually, really wonderful. So uh, uh, we will put it out, and then if anybody, uh, as we get responses, we could actually pass it on to Dr. Jin Su. So, and that way we can actually pass on. And a lot of people come up asking for slides. A lot of them ask for videos. You know, the, for the talks that come up, and, and then we actually send them, send it all out to them. And, um, you know, there's quite a bit of, and these are all young people actually who would like to learn and, you know, coming upcoming young nephrologists and so on and so forth. So I think it's really interesting. And, and I mean, the, the slew of topics that are mentioned and, and the depth of information and knowledge that would be translated, you know, and that they would gain would actually be phenomenal. The knowledge that, you know, these things can be, are being done is itself a very big thing. Anybody with any questions, any comments, please come up. Please don't hesitate. Please come up. And I would say one, one comment I was going to say, Lloyd, is that one of the things uh, when I look at this um, uh, program uh, this year um, is that in the last 20 years or so, or 25 years since I've been going to the ASN, it's generally been like, you know, what do we do for CKD? It's just ACE inhibitors, ARPs, and then they end up in dialysis. The last five years or so, there's been such excitement uh, with new drugs that have significant impact on slowing down progression of kidney disease, whether it's SGLD2 inhibitors or newer antihypertensives, um, you know, blockers of the aldosterone pathway, et cetera. I think that kind of information needs to be spread to younger people. If you want the younger people to go into nephrology, they, you know, like the way young people tend to get attracted to oncology because they see a lot of the new drugs. I think the way we get more, some of the younger people get excited is to sort of um, expose them to some of the new developments that's happening. And more young yeah. people, uh, the best young people, if they go into nephrology, we as a society and we as a, as a group of physicians are, and the patients will benefit. And so that, that's the exciting thing. And this is the right, great time for 
uh, for these young people to participate. Um, you can see, even I saw myself, I'm super excited about the program just because of all the um, you know, trials, clinical trials that are positive. We also have a very exciting late breaking session uh, where we're going to be having seven or eight uh, positive, uh, I'd say mostly positive, you know, clinical trials that have real impact in patients. That's, that's really I was, uh, Lloyd, sorry, I, I was going to add something to that and, and Anand, uh, it may be slightly contrarian to what uh, to what you said. So, so there's no question at all, right? It is an amazingly exciting time for nephrology. But I also, with all of these new therapies, but I also think that a challenge that faces the kidney community worldwide is how do we make sure that these new innovations actually reduce disparities in kidney care as opposed to enhancing them, right? How do we get the implementation of these drugs in the US to the people who really need them, uh, who may not be at the top of the socioeconomic strata? And worldwide, how do we get these drugs uh, uh, to the people who need it? Because uh, for most, uh, uh, for, you know, 80% of the world, preventing people from getting to end-stage kidney disease is, is often a life and death issue. And I think that's a challenge that we all as a community face. And I think the voice of you know, places like Africa and, and Asia, uh, South America is going to be critical in this. Yeah, I would love to underscore that. I think that that is another piece that 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 um, during Kidney Week we we have some speakers that will be talking more about this space of implementation. Like, how do we we have increasingly new tools, but how do we actually get them to as um, as Dr. Roy Chowdhury was saying? How do we get them to the people that need them? And and so um, I, I definitely think that's an area that um, is also emerging while we're getting these new therapies uh, in place. And so would certainly love for for um, us to be able to continue uh, with you all to sort of connect and think about about um, how it can be implemented, including uh, in Africa, uh, as well as the rest of the world. And Anand, I agree with you about the excitement. I just wanted to give, I just <laughs> wanted to give the other, the other side of the coin, because I think it's so important. And um, that's the challenge for us. It's a bit like, uh, I think this is where, you know, engagement with governmental agencies, et cetera, might help. It's a bit like HIV. I think for, for about 10 years, HIV was a death sentence. And then when the new antiretrovirals were coming out, um, you know, changed the world. Like the U.S. had a program in Africa that changed um, access to some of those drugs. It's the same kind of thing. I think that first we have to preach the knowledge and how do we engage governmental agencies to sort of help yeah. the world and yeah. cut disparities that you talk about. Yeah. And, you know, and, and this is why these sorts of discussions and, and as Lloyd was saying, uh, it's, it's important for not just for Deirdre and Anant and I and, uh, to speak. So we would like to hear from you. But, you know, one example, uh, you know, very recently, of course, has been the hepatitis C story. And uh, Gilead, you know, gave the production rights of that to seven, uh, uh, I think, mainly Indian generic pharmaceutical companies. And so, and I'm presuming it's the same in, in Africa, but in many parts of the world, you can get those drugs at a much lower cost. And, you know, I, I think the point that Anant made is, is really important. Uh, even though we don't think of chronic kidney disease as a medical emergency in many parts of the world or most parts of the world, dialysis is a medical emergency because of issues around cost. And so maybe if these drugs that are so effective were available at uh, uh, in a, at a different cost, uh, that could be very, very important. So there's one one little uh, one chat uh, uh, comment uh, that is from uh, Dr. David Atunhi. Uh, how do we harness science from Africa, inclusivity in trials, etc.? That's a question. Dr. Atunhi is from um, Uganda. Is there something that can be said? Um, I, I can speak to, uh, if Deirdre and Anand want to that. It, it, you know, this has been, uh, and maybe I'll ask Deirdre in particular to comment after me. You know, this has been uh, a, a huge issue within the US. And, and again, I think brings out what we had discussed earlier, that there, that there are so many commonalities. Uh, in the US, I think it's a huge problem that we have a very low rate of recruitment of uh, African Americans and Hispanics, and I would say people from rural areas and border areas, potentially inner city areas, 
into clinical trials, and yet the, the, the largest burden of kidney disease is borne by these same groups. And so, you know, we, their ASN has been, particularly through the Kidney Health Initiative, has been really very active in trying to uh, 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 ensure that there is, um, you know, a more equitable recruitment into, into clinical trials. Uh, we've also uh, pushed hard to make, sh to, to try and make sure that uh, kidney disease patients are included into cardiovascular outcome studies from which they're often excluded, despite the fact that our patients die of cardiovascular problems. And again, you know, I think this is a huge opportunity to, um, to engage with, with Africa. Um, uh, you know, there are already a number of basic science uh, partnerships, so the H3 Africa study, uh, but uh, maybe it's time for a more clinically or a clinical trial-based uh, partnership. Uh, uh, I don't know, Deirdre, I'm sure you'd be yeah. able to build, build on that. <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks for that, Prabir. So I, for sure, think that this is definitely an area that we need to do more work in. And one one challenge um, I can say for sure in the in the U.S. is that we don't always engage these communities that we want to uh, that you know otherwise in, include in these studies. We don't engage them early on, and so that's something that. Um, uh, you know, through the Kidney Health Initiative and sort of other initiatives, it's uh, that that's been um, something that hopefully will increasingly happen more where we're sort of thinking at the front end about what's going to be, what's going to make participating in these sorts of trials feasible for some of these um, populations that we are most concerned about, uh, whether that's because of their socioeconomic status or because of their, um, uh, where they live and, and their, their ability to actually access the clinics that are conducting these sorts of trials. And so I think that that to the extent that we can um, think much more early in the process when we're designing these trials um, to actually engage with these people, I think we're going to uh, be able to make better advances in terms of inclusion of them when it when it comes to time it comes time for for actual recruitment. Um, but but definitely this is um, something where we need a lot more work. Yeah. And, and and one area that the ASN has. Uh, uh... Uh, you know, put a fair amount of effort into is in partnerships with the FDA. And so, you know, that could be uh, another pathway because, uh, uh, you know, the FDA can ask for, uh, you know, for a diverse population. And and uh, I think the combination of that with multinational uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, I, I think could be, it could push could push the industry in that direction. Okay, maybe uh, I think one last comment. You know, somebody mentioned about the agents of dialysis. Now, in this part of the world, where I, come, I come from Rwanda, and, and that's where I'm speaking from. Now, if you estimate, uh, probably just an estimate, maybe um, out of maybe 1,000 people who require dialysis, um, I think maybe one, oh, only one can afford it. Now, basically, what that means. Uh, is that the rest 999 die? So if if, if we, we, we if, if 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 you have got this, you know, the new drug and the new innovations that would delay progression of kidney disease, and if if, if with that one, even if you save 100 more people, that would be a very big job done actually. So it's it's very important to network and uh, utilize, you know, this thing. And so I think we are going to take on this message and I think uh, probably not only in Rwanda, but I think in, in, in the, the Afra, the, on the Afrian forum, I'm sure there are members actually here who are listening, members of the African Society of Nephrology. So I think we, we, we should disseminate this information and uh, work out how we can harness uh, these new innovations in the pro, uh, delaying progression of kidney disease. Uh, I, yes, I mean, the figures that you mentioned, which were far worse than, you know, I had anticipated really makes, uh, it makes, uh, let me put it another way, not using some of these drugs could be a death sentence down the road. And, and so in many ways, this is a kidney emergency in, because dialysis isn't there. And um, I think this is a policy. Uh, it's, it's like you said, the African Society of Nephrology, uh, I think this is a really important issue. It's a policy issue. 
And again, I think, uh, and, uh, you know, ASN has, has really invested a lot in policy. Maybe there are common lessons that we can share or things that we've learned or not or or mistakes that we've made it's very important i and i you know i think work also around with with these these drugs is for sure is one thing and there are certainly non-pharmacologic uh, you know approaches also to preventing um progression and i think we need uh you know more effort around that as well um and you know, I hope that some of what what is being learned and some of the studies being done in North America around around that um, can also, in addition to the to the drugs that we've talked about, can also um, be disseminated be disseminated um, uh, around the world as well. So, um, yeah. And and sometimes you know you don't need, and maybe Lloyd could speak to that because they've been obviously studies from uh, India, Dr. Mani's work, where relatively, you know, very cheap uh, antihypertensive medication regimens uh, potentially could have a great, could have a great impact. So I, I think it's both, it's, it's both, it's both ways, but. Uh, yeah, and I think, well, if, if I may use maybe uh, sodium glucose code transporter inhibitors, as examples, these came, uh, they came into the market in uh, late 2000 and early 2010. Now, we have been reading about those good benefits of, you know, the, the cardiovascular benefits of uh, sodium glucose code transporters. But, uh, well, I think I, in, in, a, in, in a forum like this one, you know, the, the Africa Healthcare, Africa Healthcare Network fireside, fireside chat. I think I came to learn that they are beginning to frequent Tanzania. We don't have them here. And I think I'm looking forward to the time when we shall be having them around. I think um, in, 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 in a forum like this, you know, I think uh, there should be a way to kind of um, point out to the pharmaceutical companies to do their quick marketing in the area so that uh, these new technologies, the, the new drugs that come into the market that are beneficial, like the sodium glucose transporters could be available actually everywhere. I, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe Jonathan Wall can tell us if, if they, I'm sure they're available in Kenya, but you don't have them yet uh, in, in Rwanda. Uh, yes, they are available. The SGLT2 inhibitors are available in Kenya. The paglifrozin and paglifrozin, both of them are available. Uh, I think there's a, the brand of canagliflozin also is available. And um, um, obviously, with all the new studies coming up, we've really taken them up a lot, although they're expensive. And therefore, for those patients who, are, 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 who can afford, then we make them available to them. And uh, we hope that we'll see similar outcomes as in the clinical trials. It's still maybe one year or two years on their use. Thank you. Good. Dr. Robert, uh, would you like to say something from Uganda? Yes, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a bit in the dark, but uh, it's a great you can see you. privilege. You can't see me. Let me try to. We can see you. I can see you. You can see me. Wow, wonderful. Yes. So it's a great pleasure. And again, I thank the organizers, Dr. Lloyd and the team for bringing us yet a team of experts. I was last uh, at the ASN in 2013 uh, as part of my visit to Yale. So I know that there's a lot of privilege and I would encourage my colleagues to attend as much as possible. This is a very great opportunity for us to learn from the best and then also ensure that we bring back home. As for Uganda, we do have the SGL2 in it us. SGL2 inhibitors in Uganda, but they are still quite costly. But uh, we have the cardiology team moves quite fast. And uh, I think for them, they have guys who can afford a bit more. So they are kind of pushing this uh, faster. But sharing information and learning how these things are working, I think is the best way to go. And we can always lobby uh, our governments and our colleagues in the pharmaceutical companies to ensure that these drugs become available. And I agree with the previous speakers that like most of the developments that have come, look at the internet being able, I'm using my phone now, we didn't have to get all these cables and wires. We can skip very many generations 
but we need help and we need collaborations uh, from people who have done it, who know how to do it, and best through networking. And I think this fora is good because it brings many of us together and we should not just stop here. Perhaps we should continue discussing so that we are able to harness to the point of including some of our individuals in the trials, because once they are included, it becomes much easier for them to get the product once it goes on the market, or even uh, implementation science of seeing how it works in the real world. Uh, uh, people think that uh, most of our countries like Africa, we can't do this. Same like happened to ARVs, they used to say, you know, those guys can't tell time, how will they take the ARVs and look what they have done. So I think the same movement needs to happen in these non-communicable diseases, which are becoming now much more dangerous than even some of the infectious diseases. We've done some studies in Mulago, looking at drains and major causes of killing disease. We published this in PROS1, and it clearly showed that non-communicable diseases, as far as mortality and the rates of admissions are concerned, have actually already overtaken infectious diseases, at least in our national referral hospital. So I would urge our colleagues to continue working on this and harnessing these collaborations to ensure that our people get the best drugs, uh, not after 10 years, but now. Thank you very much. May I, may I comment a little bit, uh, Dr. Lloyd? Um, uh, I know ASN uh, provides an incredible um, educational and scientific materials uh, but the issues here are accessibility of these materials, specifically and um, for Africans. Um, the fees, uh, as you can see, uh, to join ASN, be able to join ASN week uh, for Pharaohs is 150 USD, which is uh, quite high uh, in you know, most of the nephrologists working in, in Africa. So, I would uh, probably request uh, for next year uh, that we, you, you probably give um, a reduced price uh, or fees for African nephrologists, especially young nephrologists from Africa who want to join uh, the ISN work for, for the future, in the future, probably next year and or the year 2022-23. If you could um, give me an idea of how many uh, fellows and trainees there are in Africa, um, I can maybe look into what we can do for you all. And we really appreciate the opportunity to engage with you in this way and whatever we can do to help you all get the um, research and the updates. Um, I think so if you can give me some background on that, um, I can go back to the ASN leadership and see what we can do. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I was just going to, going to say, so you've got two people on ASN leadership, I guess, uh, here on the call. And uh, uh, yeah, we would love to, uh, you know, try and, uh, uh, I guess I should speak for myself, I would love to try and work and uh, be innovative uh, uh, about this, you know, maybe there could be a single membership that goes across 10 people, for example, uh, um, you know, uh, or, or different uh, things. But again, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I would be, and I'm sure, uh, I, well, I won't speak for Deirdre, but I would be delighted to sort of uh, try and champion this uh, within council. Thank yeah, you. Thank I, you. So for sure. And, and definitely one thing to keep in mind is that, that, that membership in terms of ASN is free. Am I, I think that's accurate, right, Jinsu? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just the, it's the attendance yeah. at the meeting the is, is yeah. the cost that we're speaking of. And there are some... Um, international um travel awards i'm thinking of the um the uh gosh the bill mitch i think uh fellowship i believe is an international um travel award for people in terms of attend to be able to attend the meeting when we do have an in-person component but i think you you raise an important um issue broadly that that I, I would certainly be excited to to um to think more about i think we've got uh, dr engiki who's here a very prominent leading nephrologist head of uh, kenyatta uh, dr engiki would you like to say a few words uh thank you very much uh, dr Leod. and uh it's a pleasure always being around uh, i'd always want to join but sometimes i'm caught up but thank you very much and i'm happy to be in the group dr Malloy. 
you would like to say something? Hello, hello, Dr. Lloyd. Thanks a lot. Thank yes, you very yes, much. Please come on. Um, unfortunately, I just, uh, I just joined now. I think I confused the times. So I missed the times. I forgot that it's one hour earlier in our side. So my apologies. So basically, I think uh, it's, it has been a really uh, good opportunity interacting. And, and I should really thank all of you all for having come on board and, and given us your valuable time. Uh, it's wonderful that the young people will be able to attend the ASN. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Jin, so I think uh, I'll put it out to the group and whoever is interested in terms of uh, certain, uh, you know, uh, maybe some uh, uh, educational material, uh, uh, you know, on, on some of those uh, important topics for, for this part of the world, like API, dialysis, CKD, conservative management, GN, you know, these sort of COVID now and these sort of things would really be useful. Uh, whatever possible, I think uh, it would be great. And I will also try to reach out to the teaching institutions to see uh, you know, the fellows who can actually uh, would be very interested to join in there. And then I will connect them if possible in groups to see if you know, it's possible to get some sort of a, a discounted, uh, as Dr. Gina mentioned, we will actually try to do something on that, that uh, side as well. Dr. Gina? Yes, yeah, thank you. That would be very helpful. And I think uh, Dr. Lloyd, if we don't have any other comment. Um, I think it's uh, Doctor, 10 minutes. Doctor yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Francis. Dr. Francis, yes, pediatric nephrology. Yes. Yes. Dr. Francis is one of the leading pediatric nephrologists uh, trained in South Africa in Tanzania now. Please, Dr. Francis, we'd like whatever you want to say. Yes, uh, thank you very much for uh, this platform. I, I think it has been a very interesting discussion and um, I, I really want to echo the comment that was raised by Dr. Egina regarding the uh, accessibility and the ability to pay for the, uh, the fee. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, I think it is interesting that there are, uh, the, 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 the fact that the council members are willing to uh, give us support as uh, fellows, number of fellows. The, the only challenge is the fact that uh, Africa is a big continent and they have several countries and each country will be kind, kind of different. So if you're looking at Tanzania, we have nephrology, local nephrology training. So then we might say that we have fellows that are training, but other countries might not have uh, these fellows. So, and uh, basically most of the uh, doctors that are providing services uh, in, in, in Africa might not be uh, nephrologists. So they might be just medical officers and some of them might be physicians. And so, so that being the case that we might need to look for a platform that gives them opportunity to join in so that they can at least get some ideas and um, some uh, tips on how to manage these patients better. So it might not be necessarily be for fellows and we might not have so many fellows in Africa. There'll be countries that have a lot of fellows, but uh, there'll be a lot of countries that might not have, might not have fellows at all. So, so I think it is it's really, really uh, good. But then I also want to uh, just talk something about ISN. I think ISN is uh, kind of revolution, International Society of Nephrology has really revolutionized the practice of nephrology in Africa by making sure that there is capacity building in terms of uh, training um, fellows through short-term training that is equipped them with uh, skills for managing patients. And this is a very short-term tra training. Most of these fellows were trained for six months and then they went back and uh, set up things and started doing things. So, and, and it is always um, challenging uh, when, you, when you look at the aspirations that um, ASN has and what, what our practice in Africa has. Because, I mean, we, we, are, we are aspiring for two things. We really want to set up things at the very basic level, but at the same time, we also need to go and run with the cutting edge technology. Look at the new molecules that are coming, you know, and all this. But then we don't have basic things available. In Tanzania now, we don't have any, none. We don't have any single phosphate binder that is registered in the country that somebody can get. So these are, we're talking about the basic phosphate binders that are not accessible. So then when you think about the molecules that are coming up today, then that, then you, you, you wonder then, would you really go for the, 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 the these state of art, uh, uh, molecules that are coming or would you go for the basic things that are not yet in place so this has always been a challenge when we are 
this is the country that we have only one center that is providing peritoneal dialysis for children with acute kidney injury using an improvised technology. It's a country with more than 60 million people and a lot of kids that have acute kidney injury across the country, but they don't have access to, to, to this uh, basic uh, life-saving uh, uh, equipment and, and skills. So we are always conflicted when we have to learn new technology, but then go back to the basics and set up basics. So I think it is a very good way of um, uh, creating partnership, but the, to have a meaningful partnership, then we need to engage in ways that will build capacity in, 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 in African countries. That, that will really be a big game changer of uh, what happens in future. I've been, I've been, I've been following closely the programs like H3 Africa program. It's a very, very good program and it, it will provide very good uh, information as far as uh, technology and understanding of kidney disease. But if you look at the capacity building side of it, you wonder really if, if once the project is over, are we going to be able to have capacity for processing our renal biopsy in Africa? Are we training uh, nephro nephropathologists in Africa in the sense that they will be able to access and use the tools that are now being used? Because now we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are getting biopsies and then we are also shipping them and they're getting processed in your in, in, in the US, you, we get results, which is good actually, because it helps the treatment of the patients. But at the end of the day, once the project is over, we might not have pathologists that will be able to process these specimens in, 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 in these countries. So which 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 now brings the challenge of how do we move forward and how do we improve uh, what we are doing at the moment? So I, I think it is a very good um, uh, platform that we've been discussing about this one, but the big game changer will be building capacity in Africa in such a way that these people that are working here will be gradually developed in advance, you know, um, looking at the cutting edge technology, but also providing the basic uh, requirements and foundations for uh, practice of nephrology in Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Francis. And uh, Professor Francis, thank you very much. That was a very good comment. Maybe you can hear from the yeah, well, I and thank you for that. I, I guess a question that I had was whether in this, um, at least I can say in North America, there's been a kind of an uptick in the use of um, telemedicine, uh, particularly in the setting of the pandemic. And I'm just curious as to as to how that has, if at all, has has helped to sort of facilitate being able to um, uh, improve the, uh, you know, ability to kind of make contact with, for example, a uh, renal pathologist that might be able to, to, um, to, to read biopsies and kind of communicate back, back with, with you all. That was one thing that came to mind when you were really describing this, this challenge of, of when these different programs like H3 Africa may come into, um, uh, different settings that if, if we don't build capacity, you know, for, for the clinicians there to sort of continue that work going forward, that, that that's, that's a problem and a real disservice. So I'm just curious about what, what role you see um, telemedicine playing in that, in, in sort of addressing that. So, uh, we do use telemedicine in Rwanda, Dr. Narendra. Well, I think you've been doing a lot of work. I think uh, treating HAI on the Congolese border, Dr. Narendra. Uh, it, it, we, 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 we've not been using telemedicine as, as such, but we're using telephone. Telemedicine, I, think, I, I suppose, strictly it is you, you know, where you are, you, you kind of transmission of the picture and the voice. That's telemedicine. But what we've been using, uh, what we've been using here is, is, is the telephone. I, uh, now, I, uh, I'm, I'm based in Michigan, though I visit this, the centers at the Congolese border, you know, once every month. And, um, uh, well, so they're doing, but I, I receive you know, kind of, well, I, I'm on the network, I can see what's going on for, for, for each patient. But uh, for acute kidney injury, if there are cases, or, or even for chronic kidney disease, uh, we've got, you know, the doctor there gives me a call and we discuss, we discuss a case. He gives me the data and we discuss and uh, okay. then, if, you know, I advise and we agree on what, on the way forward. And I think, uh, the, I recently we we, we we had a poster presentation in, in um, international I mean the World Congress of Nephrology actually we we, we we did present some data on that and uh, I think that it, it I think we are very happy with that we, we, what's happening is that maybe fifty percent of our patients not even require dialysis 
but they have, they have my service, my service as a nephrologist. The rest, fifty percent who do require dialysis, actually, you know, you know, we, we have we've been able to save lives. We are still accumulating this data, and and and, and I think it's a it's a it's a, a good example. Even when you've got, uh, you know, in terms of human resources, as far as the nephrology is concerned, how uh, he, uh, he can distribute uh, his expertise uh, to a very wide area uh, through through the telephone. Yeah, and if you I, don't mind, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was yeah. just gonna say, if you don't mind me asking, who, how are you compensated for that? So if you're, if, for that service, because if it, it sounds like you're, you're doing, if you're doing work right at the, you said the Congolese border, right? So where, how do you, how do you get compensated for your services? <laughs> when it comes to service of, of my country in the, in the last, maybe since 1990, I, most of most of the time, I've been you know kind of rendering services free of charge, even when I didn't have a salary. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, how am I compensated? Uh, I'm compensated when we've got um, when we have this when we have patients. I mean, those patients that um, who go on dialysis, they pay, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 I'm compensated for that. Mm -hmm. Now, now those fifty percent who don't require dialysis. I'll, I'll. Maybe Dr. Ngigi had a question or a comment. Dr. Ngigi from Nairobi. Uh, th thank you very much. It's a comment I want to make, and I hope I can be heard because I'm still driving. Yes, uh, the uptake of telemedicine in, in Kenya has been really, really good, and particularly with the coming of the East African Kenya Institute. Um, at the Kenyatta National Hospital, we have got a very robust uh, telemedicine platform, which was donated to us by the African Development Bank which has been very helpful in disseminating information for our fellows who are training for the Staff African Kidney Institute. And indeed, my friend, Dr. Sokwala at the Aga Khan Hospital has started um, a renal biopsy symposia every week using telemedicine. So I'll say that telemedicine has really revolutionized the way we are looking at, at uh, disseminating information on kidney disease, and it will be the way to go. But of course, it's initially expensive. Getting the platform, uh, purchasing internet can be expensive, but in the wrong run, it looks like it's a way to think about. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rio. Yeah, I, I, did, I did have one question. So, you know, it, you know, when we think of telemedicine, you're thinking of platforms and other things, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that there, there could potentially be innovations around cell phone technology so that it's a simpler, more easily available form of uh, telemedicine. Is, is that a potential opportunity yes. or? Yes, you can have, fix your telephone to the screen, the big screen, and then that can come on the big screen as well. Even even your, uh, your telephone can be linked to the big screen, like a big television, uh, a big screen, really big screen. So that's a potential. So there are teaching institutions out here, like in Nairobi, Dr. Igigi leads, or in, in Tanzania where Dr. Francis is. So these are institutions where actually ASN can have programs, teaching programs coming in as well. These are small things to start with, and then we could see the gaps. It would really make a lot of difference, a lot of difference to the youngsters coming. But that's where the youngsters come out today. Yeah. I, well, I, just I did, to, but, Dr. Vincent, just a step further, I think the reality is telemedicine started with the phone. Um, I think we're talking about much more advanced concepts when it comes to telemedicine. But what Dr. Narindwa does is in fact, I think, what you're alluding to in the fact that when a patient uh, presents itself to a medical officer in a remote a district, uh, not even remote, a district uh, yeah. hospital uh, on, on the border of Goma or Bukavu um, in, in Western Rwanda, um, ultimately it's a phone call. And, and that's basic um, telemedicine. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. the, the advent, the requirement of a smartphone and video really isn't required. Um, at, at the most basic sense. And that, that's what's being done in Rwanda and, and across East Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. I, I just wanted to make a, a, a comment to I, what I thought was a, a wonderful uh, earlier comment about uh, uh, capacity building. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that's, I think that's, there's a message or a conversation there for ASN to have. Clearly, you know, the way to do it uh, uh, is, you know, to have a hub and spoke pattern where, you build capacity at a single place 
<clears throat> in a country or region, and then that person, that place becomes the teacher, and is a, is, and then you can have the spokes coming out. Uh, um, it's um, I, I think that that is key for uh, both engagement and for teaching and for patient care. And, um, you know, I, I think that's, I, I'm definitely going to take uh, a number of aspects of this conversation and uh, present it out to AS and council uh, for sure. So this, for me personally, this has been really, um, uh, it, it has been a really important conversation. So thank you. Yeah. Um... So if, if 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 I could just comment a bit so that we can see how uh, capacity building in this uh, part of the world can change what we're doing. So uh, during my nephrology training, of course, we did not have any nephrologists in Tanzania by then. So in 2006, we had only one nephrologist who was trained in South Africa through the uh, ISN initiative. So this candidate went to South Africa and trained there. And after that, we had we had, we had only one nephrologist then, and uh, we. We, we, we were collaborating with University of Bergen and Christian Medical College in Velour in India. So there was a program that was a program for trained nephrologists in Tanzania. So these candidates were enrolled in uh, Moimbili University, which is based in Tanzania. I'm also intrigued by the large number of uh, Dr. Pereira Kamats. I'm presuming, Nikhil, you've given your, uh, you've given your log on sign or logo to a number of people. Well, I have not earned the title of doctor, but I, I will blame Dr. Lloyd Vincent on giving my personal dial <laughs> to, uh, to the masses. So, so, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, my name is Francis. I'm Francis Furia from Tanzania. So I'm, I'm Francis Furia from Tanzania. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. I was when you had when I uh, no, absolutely, uh, 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 Dr. Francis. <laughs> I, I was when you had cut off, you had cut off. And so I was just commenting that. Uh, uh, I think Nikhil has given his uh, call sign or whatever you call it to a, to a number of different people. Yeah, thank you. So, so I think through that program that managed to give us exposure uh, to India and to Bergen, uh, which is Norway, really exposed us to two different levels of care. So if you're looking at the Norway, this is the state of art, you know, these are the people that are everything, they have everything that they could, they needed for care of patients. And then we went to India, you see that these people are struggling with resources, but they still have the best care and they're offering state of art uh, services. And when we came back to Tanzania, where very little was happening. So we managed to uh, negotiate through that. And then slowly we started building up things. So we started uh, the, the, the services gradually. So if you're looking at what, where we came from, so you will see that that kind of capacity building locally with uh, exposure and uh, engagement with faculties from India and Norway had given, had given, given us a very push uh, to move things uh, forward. And we've been having, uh, close engagement and um, uh, cordial collaboration. So we've been keeping in touch throughout the process, but that has changed things. We have not started training uh, fellows locally. So some of the nephrologists that are speaking in this platform here, they were trained locally. Of course, they had some time that they went as uh, visiting or short time they spent in some other institutions just to see how things are done, but they are basically trained locally. And if you look at the numbers that we've been able to train uh, through this program, is uh, significant to send people, you know, going can be quite difficult. So I, I'm, I'm looking at this kind of collaborations that can really uh, enhance and uh, support the, the, the... I think we lost Dr. Furia. Um, comment I, I would just make regarding, uh, I think we do not take anything away from the accomplishments of the East African Kenyan space, man. Yes. And, uh, sorry, Dr. Furia, you had cut off. Just one thing I was quickly saying, I, I, I think we can take nothing away from the great accomplishments at uh, Moon and Billy and the East Africa Kidney Institute. But what I would challenge the group, um, generally speaking, is to potentially pursue less structured uh, methods of capacity building, not just for um, individuals who are looking for nephrology training, but for capacity building physicians, medical officers, et cetera. Because ultimately, there are no, not enough nephrologists in East Africa, period, um, by a magnitude of probably tenfold. Um, so how can we enable capacity building 
of more junior professionals as they work through their careers and really encourage individuals to pursue nephrology. Because one thing we know in the U.S. right now is there's actually a decline. And in globally, it has been a struggle of many of the larger organizations like ASN, ISN, to attract individuals to pursue nephrology as a career and a life. To close now, I think the people have other appointments. I think we'll have to call it a day. Extremely grateful for the session. And, and thank you very much uh, for making it on, Dr. Jinsu and um, okay. and uh, and Dr. Cruz. Uh, extremely grateful for the wonderful session that we had today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much.